Hello. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. 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 Hey. Hello. Hello. I'm going to wait about three minutes so that we can get at least half of the class actually here uh, so that that way I don't have to repeat everything. What I am going to do though is for whenever we have these sessions online, I'm going to send you guys a link to a YouTube channel where you can review the video uh, if, you, if you feel like you need to. Okay. I see some more people entering, which is great. Go ahead and start. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. So what we're going to do today is the first thing I want to do is to show you how I've restructured our course. I haven't done anything major. I've kept everything that you're used to seeing intact. Uh, but then what I've also done is I've created some tabs that allow you to readily access the information that you need for this course. This should be the uniform design that you see for all of your College of Business courses. I can't control though what everybody may have done, but this you should see some semblance of a uniform design uh, across your other courses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Let me go back. Now somebody is going to need to turn down the uh, television that I hear in the background. <laughs> if I can hear, that means that everybody else can also hear it. <laughs> Here. Oh. Yo. Okay. All right. So let's How you doing, Ms. Rivers? Hello, guys. How you doing, Ms. Rivers? Can I get my I'm attention? doing fine. I'm so glad to hear all of you guys. You know, I'm glad to hear you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got his face in the camera. Oh, you can see me, G? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so so that, so we've got so many people here in our meeting. We want to try to be as productive as possible. And so you would probably want to turn down the volume. Oh yeah, I got you. On the various videos. Everybody just mute themselves. Yeah, everybody, everybody, try to mute yourself until. Just mute yourself. Yeah, thank you very much for that guidance, Christopher. So everybody you mute yourselves in, until I give you guys. Uh, license to speak. That way we don't all have to hear the TVs in the background, etc. All right, good. All right, so what I want to do is to share with you my screen. So now I need someone to tell me that they can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Hey, Miss. Hey, Miss. Hey, uh, oh, I got a question. How would you do this big project for everybody at home? Yeah, well, that makes it even easier. You're not gonna have to present anymore, obviously. Yes, so I'll go over that last after I go over what we need to do for the uh, 
just how to access all of your assignments. A lot of people are really missing a lot of assignments. You don't have very much time until the end of the semester. So I just want to make sure everybody can access that. I don't time. need like this. You know, I feel like I feel like some people ain't got the access to resources. So I mean, like you know, oh my god, a collaborative uh, pro I mean, a collaborative project, you know, wouldn't be so so. I would want to fail. Well, here's here's what you're gonna do. So it, it's not that difficult for you guys to do it. All you gotta do fast. is to access a link, and then you've gotta uh, do your part independently and copy and paste it there. And so I don't I don't see the level of difficulty for that for most of you guys. And uh, I've also sent some instructions in the email that I sent out or the announcement that I sent out of what needs to be done. But we'll go over that in just a bit, and I'll show everybody how to access this. So. You know, you got to log into Blackboard as we always do. And when we're sharing Zoom screens, it sometimes gets a little slower. But I want you to see Why? these tabs that I've created over here on the side. Um, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to enter student preview so it looks just like the way that it looks for you. All right, so you see on the left, you've got a weekly schedule of assignments tab, a student resources tab, an assignment drop boxes tab, a discussion board tab, a Zoom meeting room link, where we'll always be able to just click on this and then you register and you're in the classroom. You can use your cell phone to do this. You can also use a laptop with audio only. But you can also use a laptop that has video, obviously, and audio but you're able to pretty much, regardless of the technology that you have, as long as you have some technology, you should be able to get into the class and at least hear everything that's going on. You've got this exams, tests, and quizzes link, and then your student grade center. Now for those of you guys who are used to accessing the class the way it was, I left all of the rest of that intact for you guys. So everything that you used to be able to access is already still down here. And your discussion board and your assignment drop boxes link that used to be down here are now just put up here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at our weekly schedule of assignment. And what I've done is for each week, I've pretty much broken up your syllabus for you to be able to see in one place everything that you've got to do for each week. I've also, under each folder for each week, given you two subfolders. These two subfolders are going to be your course readings, PowerPoints, and videos, and then your assignments, right? And this and or PowerPoints, course readings, or videos. So for the week that we were not here because we were taking care of essentials uh, and, and we were all working on uh, trying to get ourselves uh, situated for this new temporary reality, then you guys are going to want to go back to that week and look at the assignments that were due. And that means that you're going to need to do week 10's assignments along with week 11's assignments. Obviously, there are absolutely no late penalties for anyone. Uh, and in fact, what I'm going to end up doing is that for all assignments that are post uh, the 16th of March, I'm not going to impose late penalties. Now, if you didn't take your midterm and it was due, Obviously, prior to the 16th and any other assignments will be prior to that date, and I'll apply late penalties to them. But for everything else going forward, since you no longer have ready access to the technology at the university, et cetera, and most people are sheltering in place, there'll be no more late penalties. But here's what that means. Uh, now, now here's the only the only thing that on which I will will not allow that lenient. That's on the group project assignment. Your group project assignment, you're still going to end up with late penalties on because you know you got other people that you're affecting when you do those assignments. So you don't do your work on that. If you miss your deadline on that, then you'll get a zero for that. What are you saying, Miss Miss um, Miss Perry Rivers? Yeah. I have a quick question. So we, we um, Shanika, Amani, and I had a uh, chapter 10, and I submitted on Blackboard. I think Sh Shanika did submit it as well, but do we all need to submit it individually to get credit or what? Yeah, you do. And so that I, I tried to put that on your syllabus oh, so okay. everybody would know. The reason I need you guys to do that is because that creates a grade for me to give each person. You understand? Okay. Yeah. So it should be the same assignment uh, that you guys all submit, but everybody who has a subsequent uh, presentation. Everybody submit that presentation uh, 
electronically. Every individual will need to submit. Okay. 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 So what you see here uh, under week 11, your course readings, PowerPoints, and videos for this week are here. I hate my little video here, but I think that the information in it is good for you guys. Because what I did is, you know how in class I typically summarize our uh, chapters. What I did here is I told you what the main uh, concepts and information are that you're going to need from chapter 10. So I did that summary or review summary for you guys here. And remember, that's not a substitute for you reading the chapter because you're going to need to read the chapter in order for you to answer all the questions that you're asked on your quiz and on your other assignment. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is um, you can access this as an additional resource to help you understand the key things you need to take away from this test. All right. I also gave you guys a link to mergers and acquisitions because mergers and acquisitions is the theory reading that you guys need to read for this week. So everything that you need to read for uh, this week's work, your chapter 10 ebook link, a summary of the chapter, read or watch, and then a link to the readings for mergers and acquisitions are all here in one place under course readings, PowerPoint, and videos. Also for week 11, I've created another subfolder called assignment. And so what you're able to do is you're able to access all of your assignments. And what I did is I gave you guys a direct link to the assignment drop boxes. For somebody's um, background noise that, uh, it, that everybody else can hear. <laughs> so you might want to mute it. Uh, I'm so, so sorry. That, that's fine. Just mute it so that we uh, can't hear what's going on in the background. I just want to give you guys a caveat. I've got three little boys with a whole bunch of energy from being pent up in this house. So they're, they're uh, on the other side of this house. But if they decide to run downstairs, you might hear a little bit of noise. <laughs> All right, so we've got these three assignments here. And then I want you to know that's the way that I've structured it for all of the weeks that are coming. So from week 11 all the way until the end of the semester, you can go into this one place and you can readily look at what you need to do for each week. You can see what you need to do here. It tells you, for example, that your rough draft is due uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, but then you can also click on week 11 and then you've got direct links to the specific readings and or videos that you need for that week in addition to the assignments. And you can also still access this same information where it always used to be. So you can still go to your e-textbook for your readings here. Still go to this uh, folder or link for your strategy theory readings here. And you can still access your assignment drop boxes, all of them, in the same chronological order that they've been in for the whole semester in the same place where they were. But if you just want to have a quick overview of what you need to do for each week, everything that you need to do is listed here. Now, I'm pretty sure that I got all of the assignments uh, linked and all of the readings linked to each week. But if, for example, you click on a future week and you see that maybe one assignment that's listed here that you need to do under assignments is not in the folder called assignments, all you're going to need to do is go here to your already existing assignment drop boxes, link where everything always was, and then you can see all of your assignments still in the same chronological order. Your student resources tab is here. Your student resources tab is some things that just give you basic information about the course, gives you a link to your syllabus, also gives you an extra link to your assignment, Dropbox, and all the things that were already under your content tab are still here for you. But instead of them being called the content tab, they're under student resources tab. Remember, you can still access most of those resources on your left still over here. So somebody unmute themselves to tell me that you understand or someone let me know that you don't understand if you don't understand. I don't know. Some people in the chat saying they're confused. So I don't know what people are confused about, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, so does that mean we're, we're going to have a chance to make up some of the work that we missed also? Absolutely. So They're everybody awesome. has the opportunity to make up everything in this course and then any other courses that you have with me. Anyway, you're allowed to make up any missing assignments. That's all the way from the beginning of the semester that you're allowed to make up courses. Now, there are late penalties 
that will still be enforced for assignments that were due through the 16th, which is right when we had this uh, temporary change in our status and able to interact. But uh, you can still submit them. That's way better than you getting a zero on the time. Um, some people are missing their midterms. You really got to get that in your midterm assessment. Uh, make sure that you turn in every single thing that's missing. Even if you miss out on your group project, not because of this event, because just in general, you missed out, you didn't do it earlier. You still need to go in and do that. I'll give you partial credit for that. Do everything I can to help you guys graduate. I can't do the work for you. But I'm not going to give you grades for work you didn't do, but I will uh, try to help you and give you the chance to submit all assignments that are missing. I'm also not going to apply a late penalty on any assignments that are due uh, from the 16th on it went on, except for, again, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> your group project. So all of your weekly assignments that are based on the chapters, I know that you guys may have limited access to technology, maybe just access to technology on certain days, all those sorts of things. And so I'm not applying late penalties on any of these chapter-based assignments, but when there's small group projects, when you're working with other people and you're not turning in your part or doing your part of them, you know, the class project, yes, the late penalties that we talked about earlier will still apply. Does that answer your question? Would you rather the students turn it in on the Google Drive or send it to the group leader to upload it? Uh, I, I thought that it, the Google Drive was better. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole bunch of emails. No, if we do it that way, then we can do it that way. Yeah. I'd rather, do you prefer, would you prefer it on Google Drive? Yeah, because that way it's all, you know, organized and together, so. Yeah, and I actually think that that's what I suggested on, uh, well, here, here's, here's what we need to do, though, for this. That's what I suggested in the email, but there are two things that need to happen. One, you've got to compile this document, right? So everybody's got to do their part, copy it and paste it into this shared Google folder, which we're going to go over that in, in a minute, Angela, for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what has to happen is I've got to have that grade created in Blackboard for everybody, remember? Mm -hmm. And so the only way for me to know that some people were completely AWOL and didn't do their parts at all is for every one of you guys to take that rough draft that was jointly compiled in, um, in Google Drive and upload it to your respective drop boxes in uh, Blackboard. So you're kind of going to do both. Everybody needs to upload or download or type in whatever their information is for their section. Then what you're going to do as each human is you're going to download that document after Angela lets you know that this is the finalized rough draft. Or she might email it to you guys, or you, she might just send you one email that just says you can download it now. Then you're going to go and upload that to Blackboard so that I can give each of you guys a grade for that. Well, you I'll email it to you guys individually. So. There we go. Ms. All Rivers, right, so um, Steve said, can you let him in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So everybody should be in. I'm trying to let people in as, they, as I see them entering. All right. So we're going to move on briefly from that, Angela, just so I can go over explaining how you can access everything else for this course. I'm so pleased to see so many of you guys present today. Please, that our technology is working and that this is a viable way for us to continue to meet. Uh, your assignment drop boxes, we've already gone over this tab here. Discussion board is just that one discussion board assignment that you had to do at the beginning of the year. Some of you guys have not yet submitted that. So if you haven't submitted that, go ahead and go there and submit that assignment. You've got your Zoom meeting room here. And then all you're going to need to do each week is you're going to click on that link. And then it's going to allow you to register and enter, as all of you guys have done, who are in this class now, which is wonderful. And then exams, tests, and quizzes. This link is where you'll find direct links to your midterm and your final. For those of you guys who are used to finding it elsewhere, it's also still under the student resources tab. That's normally your content tab. <coughs> but your exams, tests, and quizzes are here. So those of you guys who still need to take the midterm can click on it here, and then you can take it. They just got the cameras for it. I'm sorry, say once again. Oh. <laughs> OK. All right. Remember to, move, to remember to mute your uh, volume uh, if, if there's another conversation going on. I understand we're there with family. Everyone's with family and close friends, I understand. So that way we're not unintentionally distracted. 
All right. And then you've got a link to your final assessment here. I've decided to take away essay questions from your final assessment uh, to make it easier for you guys. Uh, since you've got other things. So we can take the final whenever we want. Well, I wouldn't suggest that you take the final early. You can. Uh, is that Steve who said that? Yeah, I, I don't think that you should take the final early. Um, just because if you take the final <laughs> early, then you, you know, you won't have had the benefit of our class discussions and the summary reviews. Uh, but you can, you can. But remember, you've only got one attempt, so I wouldn't do it if I was not prepared. The Student Grade Center is a link where all of you guys should be able to click on it, uh, click on it, excuse me, and then what you'll do is you'll be able to see your specific grade. So those are all of the new tabs that are for our course. Remember, all of the existing ways to access information are still intact. Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. All right. So we're going to go to our weekly schedule of assignments for this week. And you know, what we were supposed to do is to go over related and unrelated diversification. And there are some students who were scheduled to summarize the chapter for us today. Uh, have you guys actually done your PowerPoint presentation and are you able to summarize the chapter? Wow. <laughs> Someone said wow when they entered. That's amazing. So would who are the students who are scheduled to present on related and unrelated diversification? Uh, me, Amani. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you guys able to do your presentation? Uh, hold on. Let me see if they... <laughs> Since we have this environment, it actually is really cool because actually all of us have access to our computers, all of us have access to the documents that you created. And so if you're not able to figure out how to share your screen, that's totally fine. You can literally uh, go to the PowerPoint presentation that you guys came up with or the Word document that you guys came up with, and then you can go over your section of the uh, content. Okay. Remember, I've already summarized key points for you guys, so you don't have to listen to me interrupt <laughs> unless there's something I might just want to correct. And uh, you can go back and listen to that video for a review of the key things that you'll need to know for your test. Okay. So who are the who are the three students who are supposed to present? Oh Amani, 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 Mickey, and um, Shanika. Okay. So if you guys could unmute your microphone. Wait, ho, what we doing? <laughs> you ho, wait a minute. I'm sorry. You want us to present now? Oh all you want to do is summarize your information. That's all. Yeah, no, we, we, I'm not even gonna lie to you. We won't. We was not. We're not prepared. Only it's. We already turned it in. We submitted it already. That was about a week ago. But we're not ready to present it right now. Only because we haven't gotten together as a final group to like basically practice it. Really. You don't need to practice it too much. It's just summarizing. Send the help. So all you're going to need to do is to go over the information. You All you got to do is pull up the PowerPoint. Oh, and then whatever sections that you guys were responsible for, then what you're going to do is you're just going to just go over that, those PowerPoints. You don't have to show anybody the screen. Okay. You literally can just open up the document. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all right. Right now. Okay. Yeah. I can show y'all screen too. So I don't even know if she's in the chat though. Is she in the? Is she? I'm in the chat. I'm right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me. I'm about to pull it up. Hold on. Yeah. Did you get my text message? Yeah, I, I just submitted it up there. Oh, okay. Now I'm gonna uh, go and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just for a moment. You'll still hear me via audio, so that that way I can pull up the PowerPoint presentation that you guys did. Okay. So that everybody will be able to see it. This is so good.
Mm -mm. I got a question. Uh, just one minute. Hey, I'm working. Can you guys see my screen again? Um, no. No. Okay. Let me go and fix that. Can you guys see my screen again? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So your fellow students have done what appears to be a, a a well-organized presentation or corporate level strategy. And really, <clears throat> it's just about diversification, which is a specific type of corporate level strategy. Did you guys want to go ahead and start? Yeah. All right, give me, give me a second. OK. Um, so you just want me to just go ahead and read what I have on my um, PowerPoint, right? Yeah, you can do it that okay. way. Or you don't even have to read every word. It's up to you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, with the first slide, um, it's free free cash flow. Um, the which is cash beyond that needed to, that is needed to make profitable new investments in existing business. Um, it belongs. I'm sorry. He's supposed to go to the gym because I've been telling him to go. I want him to go. I was telling him. Okay, so whomever is talking, we're gonna need to. You're gonna need to mute your audio because we can hear you. Let me see if I can find who that is. No, he said we're gonna go now because he was like, "Let's go." Oh wow! Come on, Jill. I'm like, "Are we still going?" He like, "I would get to seven o'clock." He said, "I would get to seven o'clock." I don't even feel like it. So I was like, "I already knew this was gonna happen. I'm not tripping." He said, you Oh my goodness, this person does not know we can hear their whole conversation, do they? Obviously not. Girl, be quiet, girl. Be quiet. Oh, y'all be quiet. All right, let me go and let me I'm gonna go down through and see who All right. All right. So then he got mad. Yo. My my my. Okay. Yo, y'all let Perry Rivers talk. Angela. It's not me. No, 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 it's not Angela. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear. Her. Okay. So I don't hear them any longer. Okay. All right. So realize. free okay, free cash flow. Um, second bullet belongs to shareholders. Um future ROIC must exceed the value shareholders would reap by returning the cash to them. Um, the diversification strategy must pass the better off test, which is the firm must be more valuable than it was before the diversification and that value must not be fully capitalized by the cost of the, by, of the diversification move. All right, so here's what I wanna do really quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to this, this slide here. Okay. Because I think this slide is important for everybody to, to, to see first, because this tells everybody what diversification is. So, who has hey, this Perry particular Rivers. slide? Uh, that's, my, that's my side, it's still me. Well, hey, would you go you. ahead, and, but, but before you interject, if you don't mind, um, Mickey, go ahead and just tell us what diversification is. Oh, okay. Um, the hey, Mickey. hey, Mickey, hey, hang on one second. And Ms. Perry Rivers, uh, what are you doing as far as attendance? How are you keeping track of attendance? Well, we're, I'll address that after Mickey and the other students finish their presentation, okay? Uh, and so any other questions that you guys have, 
and reserve them until after they finish their presentation. All right, go ahead, Mickey. Um, diversification, the process of entering new industries distinct from a company's original industry to make new kinds of products for customers' market. All right. Market. So this is the thing that you guys need to understand. So when she was talking about free cash flow here, then really what they're talking about is why they would choose a diversification strategy and you know really they need to have free cash flow in order for them to go into a whole new industry right right uh, you can't you can't choose to you know sell um snack foods and then go into the health uh i don't know the, the health products industry without you having free cash flow um, that uh, will enable you to do this so, so then she talks about the better off test and so whether or not you choosing to enter this new industry puts you in a better situation than you were. At first. All right, so go ahead and go on, Mickey. Oh, okay, okay. Um, let's see. All right, so back to the second slide, which is transferring competencies. Um, hold on for a second. Jeez. All right, um, the process of taking a distinctive competency developed by a business unit in one industry and implanting it in a business unit operating in another industry. Um, companies that base their diversification strategy on transferring competencies tend to acquire new business related to their existing business activities because of commonalities between one or more of their value chain functions. Right, so for example, Pepsi that produces sodas may decide to purchase a bottling company, right? A bottling company that provides bottles for Pepsi and then other manufacturers of drinks or other items that need to go into bottles. But they've got a common value chain function. They've got to distribute their product and they've got to package their goods. And so they decide to enter that industry because they're able to uh, transfer competency that they have and then they can implant it in that other business, uh, in, in, in the business unit that's going to operate in that other industry. And what Mickey is going over is basically if you're going to decide to diversify your company, which means you're going to decide to enter a new industry, there are several ways that you can do it. And one of them is transferring competencies. It's one of the key strategies that firms use when they decide to diversify their company. So, Mickey, which, which next slide do you want me to go to? Um, five. We already went over four. Okay, good. All right. And a diversified company, um, a company that makes and sells products in two or more different or distinct industries, um, value chain functions, one, at a lower cost, two, in a way that allows for greater um, di differentiation, <laughs> I can't never say the word, and gives the company better pricing options or in a way that helps the company manage industry rivalry better in order to increase profitability. Okay. Then we're really just talking about synergies with their value chain functions and this is why that some firms choose to pursue a diversification strategy. But what you see here is he first gave us this definition of what diversification is. You're going to enter a different industry than the one that you're already in. So you'll now be in two industries at least. And then she gave you here this definition of a diversified company. That's the main information that you see here on your left. And you simply need to be in two or more different or distinct industries. So you're going to need to know that for your test. All right. In the next slide, leveraging competencies. Um, so let me just say this really oh. quickly, Mickey. So this okay. is another strategy. Remember she talked about transferring competencies. That's one way the firms could choose to diversify the company. Another way would be for them to leverage competency. Go ahead, Mickey. Okay, um, which is the process of taking a distinctive competency developed by a business unit in one industry and using it to create a new business unit in a different industry. Okay, all right, that's very good. And okay. um, the basis of multi-business model, companies' competitive advantage in one industry might be applied to create a d differentiation. Um, and cost-based competitive advantage for a new business unit or division in a different industry. Okay, um, and of course, this was supposed to be presented in the classroom, but where it says knowledge check, um, it, it was when it was like a, a slide or whatever, when I click it, you know, ask the students if they know any companies, but it's already there, so. <laughs> well, that's good. All right, so um, when you talk about leveraging competencies, this is, this is good though. So you guys should be able to identify companies that
create a new business unit in a different industry by taking something that they can really do well in the business unit that they've already had. So then she talks about Apple uh, and Canon. When you, when you talked about Apple or Canon, did you want to give an example of what uh, distinctive competency they leveraged or, uh, or did you have any other feedback you wanted to give? Not really. <laughs> okay. All right. So when I think about Apple, I just I think they've got a really good distinctive competency in uh, uh, creating complementary products. They've got another good distinctive. They've got another distinctive competency in terms of, of marketing strategy, and so uh, you could see how they could utilize uh, those specific competencies for them to uh, create uh, a different business unit. So let's just say if they wanted to go into the home security industry, uh, they could certainly easily uh, transfer their uh, marketing capabilities and or their uh, capacity to create unified complementary products and create uh, security-based products uh, for homes. I know that um, I use a lot of smart technology for security at our house and I would actually probably consider uh, Apple for that, even though that's not a business unit that they currently have. All right, so firms can enter another industry by transferring their competency. Or they can do it by leveraging their competency. Now, okay. the, the difference between this, transferring competencies and leveraging competencies, competencies, you can see they really seem really similar, is here, they bought a company. You see this? When you transfer the competency, they take their distinctive competency and they implant it into an existing business unit in another industry. So they're not, they're either buying a new company, and we talked about this with um, multi business firms earlier, or they are uh, taking a competency that they have. Um, <clears throat> maybe they will, uh, they have an existing business unit, they'll transfer it. But this is something that's existing. And here, when we leverage the competencies, then you create a new business unit in a different industry. So here, you're actually going to create a new business unit as opposed to maybe you purchasing another company that's already existing and operating in order for you to then uh, be operating in two different industries. All right, so what, what, where do you want me to go next? The next one, um, economy, economies of scope. Um, the synergies that arise when one or more of a diversified company's business unit are able to lower costs or increase different. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Because they can more effectively pool, share, and utilize expensive resources or capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, share resources, which lowers their cost structure, use marketing functions to better di differentiate its products, and it achieves a higher ROIC. Okay. All right. So you guys get the difference between economies of scope and economies of scale. Somebody want to tell me, tell me what, or tell us, or remind us what economies of scale refers to? Somebody can unmute and just tell us the definition of economies of scale. So um, before they do that, am I still taking participation points? You actually don't have to now. Because, oh, bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to now because I'm able to see um, and I'm able to take it. It's actually easier for me to see it than you. Economy of scale is a proportionate saving in cost gained by an increased level of production. All right. And what is your name, sir? Stephen Harris. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harris. Time. That's a great one. <laughs> so no, economies of scale and economies of scope are different, but they're related. Firms basically with economies of scale can experience cost savings by producing a lot more. Almost seems counterintuitive, but they mix a lot more and then their cost per unit goes down. And then they're able to experience these savings all across their operations because they're doing, uh, they're producing more products. Economies of scope is basically, it's similar, but instead of you producing more products, it's not about manufacturing volume. 
it's because of the ability for you to uh, spread your distinctive competencies and capabilities and your value chain functions across different companies. So it's like when you have more companies that you're operating, you have more business units operating, then what you're able to do is you're able to share your resources. Like you guys might all have the same marketing department. I don't have to duplicate the marketing department in every one of my business units. We might all have the same manufacturing plant. So I don't have to duplicate my uh, manufacturing plant um, real estate expenses across every business unit. So what ends up happening is that you end up experiencing economies of scope or these cost savings that end up lowering your overall cost structure that are due to you being in multiple business units for multiple industries. All right, so economies of scale and economies of scope uh, are related conceptually, because in both instances you're doing more, but economies of scope, more companies, more industries, economies of scale, more products in total volume. All right, Mickey, or whichever other student is, is ready to present next. No, this is my last slide. Um, utilizing general organizational competencies um, entrepreneur capabilities encourage man managers to take risks, give managers the time and resources to pursue novel ideas, not punish managers when a new idea fails, and make, <clears throat> make sure that the company's free cash flow is not wasted in pursuing too many risky ventures that have a low probability of generating a profitable return on investment. And under the organizational design capabilities, um, you want to know how much autonomy to give to managers lower in the hierarchy, what kinds of norms and values should be developed to create an entrepreneur culture, how to design its headquarters to encourage the free, um, free flow of ideas. And with the strategic capabilities, um, you wanna have the ability to diagnose the underlying source of the problems of a poorly performing business unit and understand how to proceed to solve those problems. Yeah, so really when you utilize these general organizational competencies and that's your basis for, for choosing to enter a new industry, then it's just something that the company is just not just a, a distinctive competency. It's really that your, your company overall is a really well-oiled machine. It's, it's good at uh, recognizing risks, it's good at identifying opportunities, it's good at the way that it's structured, is good in terms of, of the values and norms that are created so that they can duplicate that in another industry. And so literally, they just mean that the company is a well-organized, uh, usually efficient a company that's got multiple skills that would enable them to really be successful in any other industry that they deem uh, as one that they could operate uh, in. So what, you, what, you, what Mickey has done is she's basically told us what the definition is of diversification. She's given us the definition of a diversified company. And then what she's done is she summarized three ways that firms can uh, decide to diversify or three strategies for diversification. One would be transferring competencies. The other would be leveraging competencies. And the last one that she just went over would be utilizing general organizational competencies. Well, and that's the end of section um, chapter 10, 2, and 3. The next presenter will be Amani. Okay, so, thank you. It's Shanika. Um, I'm sorry, Shanika. Okay, you can go to uh, 10. Oh, you're already there. Uh, <laughs> limits and disadvantages of diversification. There are three principal reasons why a business model based on diversification may lead to a loss of competitive advantage changes in the industry or inside a company that occur over time, diversification pursued for the wrong reasons, and excessive diversification that results in increasing bureaucratic costs. Okay, that's clear. Uh, changes in the industry or company. Top managers must be able to recognize profitable, profitable opportunities to enter new industries and implement the strategies necessary to make diversification profitable. Most able executives join other companies and become CEOs. Uh, managers who possess hard to define skills often take their vision with them when leaving a company. A company's new leader may lack competency or commitment necessary to pursue diversification successfully over time. Uh, costs of structure of the diversified company increases and eliminates 
and eliminate any gains the strategy may have produced. The source of a company's competitive advantage can be destroyed by new technology blurring industry boundaries. Very good. All right. So you choose to enter a new industry. Obviously, you're doing it to increase your competitive advantage or for you to be more profitable. What it could end up backfiring because of changes in the industry, some of which are under your control and some that may not be. And so she's given us several different changes that could occur that could limit the profitability of a diversification strategy. Very good. All right. We'll go to the next slide. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, the bureaucratic costs of diversification. And I just want to say that again, is bureau, what you should do when you do that word is separate it. Say bureau. Bureau okay. <laughs> bureaucratic costs of diversification. Bureaucratic costs are the costs associated with solving the transaction difficulties that arise between a company's business unit and between business units and corporate headquarters as the company attempts to obtain and transferring sharing and leveraging Okay, so you can really just think about the cost for operations and integration efforts, right? So if you've got, for example, two companies that already existed uh, for a long time, and let's just say you pursued this first strategy here of transferring competencies, where there was one company that existed that you're deciding to merge with or buy, and then your company that previously existed. Well, you got managers all up and down the value chain in both companies. They're both structured a certain way. And really figuring out how to mix all of that together and integrate it well costs money. And those uh, integration difficulties are bureaucratic costs. And uh, they can oftentimes limit the profitability of uh, diversification efforts. So you can't figure out which, which uh, sections of the other company to get uh, rid of and transfer those specific tasks to another one and you can't figure out how to get the bottles uh, from Pepsi bottling over to the various plants that Pepsi has uh, efficiently uh, to produce their um, sodas or their drinks or whatever. Anyway, those are bureaucratic costs that can increase the cost of diversification and make them less profitable. Okay, coordination among units. Um, this figure illustrates how the Sony company developed a web of corporate strategies to compete in many industries. This proved state reduced its differentiation advantage and increased its oh, he oh, no. thousands. Keep going. Uh, I just did. I finished it. Okay, could you say that again? I, I couldn't hear it. Uh, Somebody says, go ahead. You want me to just read the whole thing over? Yeah, go ahead and make sure everybody got it. Okay, coordination among related business units. This illustrates how the Sony company developed a web of corporate strategies to compete in many industries. This proved a mistake, reduced its differentiation advantage, and increased its cost structure in the 2000s. Hmm. Okay, very good. You guys said you weren't prepared. It seems like you, you did your part. All right, so uh, Imani, are you ready for your section? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, did you want me to go here? Yeah, you can go right there. Okay. Um, entering new industries, internal new ventures. And then the attractions of internal new venturing. Um, it's the process of transferring resources to and creating a new business unit or division in a new industry. Internal venture is used often by companies that have a business model based upon using their technology or design skills to innovate new kinds of products and enter related markets or industries. Okay, so for those of you inter interested in entrepreneurship later in life, so if you get some sort of business development job or you get an internal new venturing job, that's the same thing as intrapreneurship. All right, so creating a new company within an existing company. Um, top three reasons why um, internal new ventures fail is because market entries um, are too small of a scale, poor. Um, uh, mine's Wednesday. Commercialization of the new venture product. Yeah, presentation with the group. Corporate management of the new venture. I didn't do nothing yet. Oh my goodness. Somebody mute their, oh. mute your 
audio. Yeah, we can we, hear you. We kind of didn't know what was going on. We thought it'd be canceled since there wasn't no class, but I guess not. Hello. We said, bro, meet your thing, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, me? Yes. Mute, Oh, my please. fault. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Scale of entry. Oh, I'm on the next slide. Large scale entrance, it realized scale economies build brand loyalty and gains access to distribution channels in the new industry, all of which increased the probability of new venture success. Um, small scale entrance, it can be more handicapped by high costs due to lack of scale economy and lack of market presence, which limits the entrance ability to build brand loyalty and gain access to distribution distribution channels um scale of interest and help you say something you want me to oh. did you want to go ahead and go over this oh yeah and then we put i put a picture i don't know if they can see it i made a bigger form temporarily so properly and time and that's large scale entry and small scale entry on the graph and it basically shows relationship between the scale of entry and profitability over time for successful small scales and large scales venture. The figure shows that successful small scales entry is associated with low initial losses, but in the long term, large scales entry generates um, greater returns. And so it just makes sense. So if I'm a bigger company and I enter an industry, so if GE decides to enter making televisions, well, we already trust them with our you know, to make our refrigerators, we already trust them, to make a lot of our household products. And so for them to make televisions it would be, you know, not a large stretch for us to trust them. And so they might lose a lot of money building that new business unit to begin with, but in the long run, because they've already got the brand recognition, they've got um, the ability to build brand loyalty more easily, they're gonna be more successful than some no, name uh, television manufacturer who decides to enter. All right. Um, commercialization. Many internal new ventures are driven by the opportunity to use a new or advanced technology to make better products and outperform competitors in a market to succeed commercially. Uh, the products under development must be tailored to meet the needs of customers. All right, so cool. So you, we know that commercialization is, is essentially getting your product successfully into the hands of consumers after you've come up with some new product or great product, right? So a lot of times firms poorly commercialize the product after they come up with something really cool. And so it's really important for you to effectively commercialize your product in order for you to be successful. And, you know, obviously you, you've chosen to make a whole new line of products if you've chosen diversification. So the only way for it to succeed is with uh, effective planning for commercialization. All right. Poor implementation, managing the new venture process and controlling the new venture division creates many difficult manager and organizational problems. Okay. And um, for section eight, we all collectively did it as a whole. Um, we want to just take turns reading it. You might want to, since you can't really coordinate that well, one of you guys could probably just do it. It's fine. I'll do the first slide. Joint venture. Okay, entering new industry joint ventures. Joint are where two or more companies agree to pool their resources to create new businesses, and they're most commonly used to enter an embryonic or growth industry. Yep, an embryonic or growth industry. Okay, so she gives you the definition for joint ventures here, which you'll need to uh, know for your test. And then there are uh, some advantages, it looks like, and some disadvantages uh, that you have on the right about joint ventures. You you want to read those too? Yeah, I'll read a little bit of it. Um, allows companies to share the risk and cause. Joint ventures partners may have different business, business models or time horizons, and it also allows frequent and close contact between companies. Okay, yeah. So, you know, sharing the risks and costs uh, is obviously a benefit. So if, if we co-develop a particular uh, concept that, and we start a new business unit together, uh, 
<coughs> so basically a joint venture is, you know, two firms get married and they have a baby, right? So mm -hmm. that's something that's, um, you can mitigate your risks. So that's the benefit. Um, but there are also some uh, problems that can arise, she's talked about, in terms of them having conflicting goals, conflicting uh -huh. business models and timeframes. And then the last one that you have allowing frequent and close contact between companies, it talks about facilitating learning and transferring knowledge can be both a benefit and a detriment. So to the companies that are the main source of the innovation and who want to be able to um, maintain some level of ownership of some of their existing uh, research and development and uh, maybe patents and innovation uh, those patents innovations become at risk when they are working closely with another company on a joint uh, venture. That other company um, could also have a benefit <laughs> in that they're able to acquire knowledge from that other company just because they were working with them. All right. Now, then we talked about um, restructuring. Um, it's the process of reorganizing and um, devices. De what is it um divesting divesting business units uh -huh. um exiting industries to refocus upon a company's core business and rebuild its distinctive um com competencies and we gave four reasons why i'll just give like a little basic rundown um start your market have value this at a diversification discount um complexity of the financial statement of high diverse diversified Many investors have learned from experience that manage, managers often have a tendency to pursue and innovations in strategic management have the advantage. Okay, so basically, uh, diversification often fails. And then we're, whoever's gonna talk about mergers and acquisitions, you'll find out that mergers and acquisitions, uh, most of research and strategy shows that they tend to not uh, result in increases in profitability for the firms that diversify. <laughs> so they either fail or they don't really add significantly, at least in terms of what you can observe on financial statements to the firms that choose diversification. Yet, a lot of firms choose it. And so um, essentially these are given four reasons why it doesn't work. Uh, diversification discount, so stocks are valued less uh, than less diversified companies because there's not a real overarching strength that investors can readily identify that they associate your firm with. You know, financial statements of these diversified firms can, hi can hide the poor performance of individual business units. Um, and then also, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this or whomever's going to go over mergers and acquisitions, we'll talk about one of the reasons why um, investors one of the reasons why a lot of managers pursue diversification is kingdom building. If you remember earlier on, I think it might have been on Mickey's slide when she talked about how um, managers of successful business units or a large diversified forms, uh, firms typically become CEOs of other companies. Well, believe it or not, a lot of times um, CEOs will pursue diversification of the firms that they currently manage because they have designs for entering other industries and they want to um, engage in something we call kingdom building. And so what you end up doing is diversifying for wrong reasons and that ends up reducing profitability. And uh, we talk about diminished advantages of vertical integration or diversification. So vertical integration is when you buy a company up and down your supply chain and the horizontal integration is when you buy a company that does something that you already do. And so, uh, research and strategic management just shows that there are just fewer advantages of pursuing diversification and mergers and acquisitions and that firms typically perform better when they're able to focus upon their core business and their core distinctive. Does anyone have any questions about this chapter? Look, everybody, everybody take your um, mics off of mute and give them a hand for doing such a good job. Yeah, you guys did a good job. You guys said you weren't there. This was fun, and you guys get extra points in my brain for being the first ones that had to do it in this environment. So that was oh, fun. Yeah. I need my points too. <laughs>
I'm here so I won't get fired. All right. So we're going to do Dr. Perry. Yeah. All right, so look. Do we got to stay in the video the whole time, or do we just got to check in? Because I still got to work. Jeremiah. No, well, you got, you're supposed to stay here until 320. So, you I stay. So, yeah, you're supposed to stay here until 320, and then you leave. But we got, but we got full-time jobs. You know, people have to go home and get money. You know, break, 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 break. Yeah, Ramona shut everything down. I'm confused. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> don't do that. Ain't right, 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 right. You, know, you get whatever is, is necessary for, for you and appropriate. So I would I would advise everyone to stay in for most of the time. This what, we're, what we're what we're supposed to do today, and I want to go over here over time. This is that we're supposed to also merge and acquisition. Miss Ferry. Yes. I have a question about the MyTap. Which which student is this? Is this Amani? Amani. Amani, hold hold on for a second about MyTap, okay? Okay. I'm going to give everybody the chance to ask questions that are related to. Uh, the course that could be beneficial to everybody. Okay. Who is scheduled to present on mergers and acquisition? You said what? Who is scheduled to talk about mergers and acquisition? Uh, is that like due on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's um, but mm -hmm. honestly, we're not really too prepared. So can we get, I, I didn't know it was going to be canceled or not. So we kind of was working on it, but we're not really prepared all the way. So can we do it on Monday if possible? No, you can't do it on Monday. Uh, but what you can do is you can do it on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday was our due date. So I'm not sure. And that might not be, a, oh yeah, yeah, that's us. But Wednesday is due, right? Okay. I mean, we'll have it ready on Wednesday. Okay. That's fine. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about our strategic plan rough draft guide. So here's what I want to do. I want to reference this announcement that I sent out to everybody. Wow, did I just hear a car start? <laughs> Somebody mute, mute. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the announcement that I sent out to everybody. I'm sorry, I'm on my way. Yeah, just mute your just mute and you can still participate via audio we can you can't hear uh we can't hear you but you can hear us so for the class project obviously i moved your draft until this sunday but what i've done in order to facilitate this for all of you guys is i created this folder called final document on our google drive where everybody can copy and paste their section work that's everybody so whatever your group leaders have assigned you, then you're able to go to Google Drive, and then you're going to copy and paste your information from whatever document you have it in on your computer onto this final document to, on Google Drive. So you know we can also access the Google Drive link for this course from uh, within the course. Let me go So you've got this folder here that's from Dr. Perry Rivers, but then you've got this folder here, this final document. And literally, what I want you guys to do for this final document, you're gonna always open it with Google Docs, that way it'll share and save whatever changes that you're making. But what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna go in here and if you've got the executive summary, then what you're gonna do is then you're gonna put this here. If you've got strategic planning methodology, you're gonna get rid of this information here. And then you're gonna make sure that you cover your sections. If you'd like to leave the, the bullet points there, you can, and then you can copy and paste the information that you have for each one of the sections. <coughs> You can get rid of that there. You're going to put the mission vision values here and then a narrative about what you're going to, whether or not uh, what this event is supposed to do is align with the organization's stated mission vision and values. 
all of your respective sections. You're gonna work on it separately on your own document, and then you're gonna copy and paste that information here. This is what you're gonna do. Now, Angela, I would like for you to uh, create a deadline for everybody in all of the respective groups to paste their information. What day would you like that to happen by? Um, can I give them a week or two? No, because it's due this Sunday. Okay, yeah. what about Saturday? Is that going to give you enough time for you to go back in and synthesize it and look at it? Well, because it's due Sunday, so would you rather... <laughs> um... No, this is all about you now. It's not me, because what I get on Sunday is all I'm going to grade. I just know that if you tell everybody that they have until Saturday, you might get it at Saturday or really Sunday morning at 3 a.m. Do you understand? Whereas if you tell everybody Thursday or Friday, maybe. Okay, let's go. Let's go for Friday at 11.59. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. Say Friday at 11.59. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do at this very moment is I'm going to send out an announcement to everyone that okay. gives them the deadline that uh, Angela has created for us all, or for you all. And remember, your draft is just that. Now, there shouldn't be sections that are just completely missing, right? You know, there should be something in each section, but your draft is still a draft. This allows yeah. everybody to see what's missing. Um, <laughs> Uh, somebody mute your microphone. So I'm just going to send out this announcement. Angela, anything else that you'd like to include in this email that we're sending to everybody about? Uh, um, for the management group, I'm going to put everything in detail tonight because I thought everything was straightforward. So I'm just going to literally give everybody their parts one by one so just look out for group me i'm a group me everybody individually on exactly what you're supposed to be doing so just look out for the group me tonight can you, can you group me first listen to Ishmael. yeah because you yeah <laughs> you go you about to confuse everybody so i'm gonna I'm group me first <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Perry Rivers. Yep. Yes, Are you still talking with the IT team after this is over? Oh, yes. I don't mind that at all. We talked, you sent me an, an email or something about that. And I, I told you I'd be happy to meet with you guys. Okay, I just wanted to make sure they heard yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to meet with the IT team as a group right after so don't leave even if the other groups have left so i'm just sending out this email that all students need to copy and paste their research information for their respective sections to the final document in the final document folder on google drive by 11 59 p.m friday March 27th right Anything else, Angela, that you'd like me to include? Um, let me see. The research information. No, that's fine. Okay. 
go about attendance? Um, does anybody from IT or finance or marketing want to give me clarity on what to send out for your sections? Mickey? Mickey's not, um, I don't know where Mickey is, but I know we have to, we have to meet, I would, at, with you after this, um, at 3.30, we have to stay. All right, what about finance? Do you guys know what you need to do? Uh, Is my finance team leader? We're still trying to figure that out. Okay. Well, I spoke with your uh, leader right before we uh, left for this hiatus. And, um, well, if you talk to the leader, then we should be good. Um, we should be good. She's just gonna she's just gonna relay us the message. Okay, because the main thing that you guys need to do is to create a profit and loss statement uh, that's based on the recommended marketing activities and other activities um, that we're gonna have, and then you've got to estimate. I told her to to do some benchmarking research um, on a typical expenses and sources of income for conferences, but I also gave you guys a template that already has pretty much everything in it that you guys need to figure out. I gave you guys a sample profit and loss statement. So really, if you go and just look at that, um, make sure that you know the parts you're supposed to complete, then you guys, you should be good. Because I gave you guys pretty, I gave you guys exactly what you need to do. Email your leader. That's what I would suggest that you do. You do immediately after the class if she's not present right now. Okay, so now is the time for you guys to ask me any other questions that you have regarding this course. Uh, and if you've got some individual grade related questions, you should probably wait um, to talk to me privately, unless you don't mind everybody else knowing your, uh, the information about your grades. But if you've got some specific questions, I would like to answer those for everybody now. So this is uh, Jeremiah Page. And, um, Jeremiah. and uh, I just want to know what my uh, overall grade is right now. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you can go to Student Grade Center. And then that'll show okay. you what your overall grade is. And it will also, if I click on it now, it's not going to show your grade. It's just going to... There's no person when I'm enrolled at, you know, I'm not a student, but when you click on it, it will show you your individual grade as it stands right now. But what it'll also do is to tell you whether or not there are items that are missing. So you'll be able to tell okay. things that you have not yet submitted. And so that tells you stuff you need to get turned in because even if there is no zero there for those assignments right now, it will be converted to a zero, obviously, at the end of the semester if you don't ever turn it in. Okay. All right. I should turn in everything that's missing. Any other questions? So do all the other assignments that you put up there, all of them still apply the same way? Yes. So there, there's, there's only been, I haven't done really any changes other than really the way that we meet. Um, you know, I structured the way that I structured the course differently in order to make it easier for you. We made sure that we use Zoom uh, to collaborate. But other than that, nothing has changed. I'll still take any assignment that you guys missed. If you missed your midterm, I'll take that. If you never turned in your strategic plan update assignment, which you should have turned in a few weeks ago, I'll still take that. If you haven't turned in your online introduction from the first week of class, I'll still take that. Any and every assignment that is missing, I will still take it. There are late penalties though that apply on everything that was due before we had to transform our courses to this format. Um, but uh, I'm not going to apply late penalties for things that are due after the 16th, which is when all of this uh, change occurred, other than mm -hmm. on your group project, which affects everybody, um, mm -hmm. both your small group project and your uh, in-class group project. Your what about the um, MindTap assignments? Yeah, just turn them all in. So the way that you access your MindTap assignments, they don't ever close for you guys. Okay, so are they, but if you do them late, is it a late penalty for those two? No, 
um, the good thing about the mind type assignments and, and most of your, a lot of your other assignments are mind type assignments, not all of them, is that I don't apply late penalties to the mind type assignments. I just go ahead and allow those based on whatever grade that you get to uh, port into the grade book. There's a, there's a, a good um, amount of co complexity on some of the assignments anyway. Um, it's not as if I'm, in, you know, so, I, I, so I, I'm not applying late penalties on my type of assignments. I don't go in and do that. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> good. Good. Not good at all. I'm doing terrific, Miss <laughs> Baby. I'm doing how you good. Doing? Yeah, it's, you know, y'all saw my little right. "Don't worry, be happy" video, right? <laughs> yes, everybody in the meeting, just do not panic. I got you guys. Everybody should know what you're doing. Right now. What's going on at graduation? Yeah, they haven't they haven't clarified how graduation is going to function, but it, it appears right now that you guys will have. Uh, some either some sort of electronic graduation, or they will just mail you your uh, diploma. There's an email going around, and it's gonna. It has like a poll in it, and it's gonna ask students what, when they want to graduate. And I think it's like June, uh, August, or uh, in the winter. Yeah, I might be able to fit a, a bed in my bed. Now, now I know. I know that the formal email that they've distributed to the faculty members has has indicated right now that the that the graduation ceremonies are officially canceled. And that uh, they're going to mail all of you guys your diploma, which well, is still got, cool because you're graduating. Um, if that ends up happening, but I, I'm with um, Kayla and being hopeful that uh, all of these things will resolve, uh, and that we'll be able to have a real ceremony for you guys that's in person sometime later. But that's not what the university has said at this point. Uh, well, uh, this, is, this is a dumb question. This is a dumb question. Are you saying like we graduated period, or based off of the grades that we get? For the, like the online work. No, I mean the courses are still going on, so your grades okay. are still going to be your grades. So you're graduating, your GPA is still going to be affected by what you do in all your classes. So Can we still call the school and pay some of our fees if we didn't get a chance to pay them while we're on campus? Yeah, you should. You should still be able to pay those fees. Many of the administrative department workers are still there okay. because they're meeting the guidelines of under ten when they're there working. Um, hey, excuse, excuse me. How we uh register for like all classes and stuff like that? You well, the cool thing is, advisor. yeah, you can email your advisor for what you need to take, but you can still register the same way you always did. Remember, you always did that electronically anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's uh -huh. cool. Is that that won't change? So you're gonna have to get your registration pin from your advisor, and most of us withhold it until we know you're in the right class. Is that the same for summer classes too? That is the same for summer classes too, is that you're going to need your registration pin for the fall of 2020 to enable you to register for the classes that are for the summer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Wait. You guys be encouraged, so, okay? My question. Question. What if somebody needs an online class over the summer? Are they still going to do that too? It looks as if they are at this point. Now, I have to tell you that all the time when we offer online courses, because I'm one of the you professors that teach online the College of Business, they're always subject to enrollment, always. So, um, so they decide based on whether or not they've got, usually, if it's a class where you're paying full tuition rates, they only need, you know, five students or more. But if it's one of these, uh, <coughs> you know, um, Trojan Advanced courses where they're paying, where you guys are paying less money, then they need a, a higher enrollment in order for them to be able to compensate the instructors. So just know that if you're planning on graduating in the fall, um, or if you need a course so that you can walk, for example, in the, uh, you know, this spring, you plan on taking it in the summer, then um, you, may, you just wanna have a plan B. That's all I'm suggesting to you. Um, that you may end up needing to take the, call, the course in the fall. Uh, oh, no, nah. I'm out of here May 16th. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about for students that are not graduating. Some students in Kobu 400 are not graduating this May. And so for them that, were, that weren't graduating this May and they were planning on graduating in the fall, you might have to do an overload in the fall if you, or just take the, whatever is required, you may just have to take the course in the fall. Um, but 
I, I, now let me say this, because I don't want to hurt enrollment for the summer courses. Right now, they've not said the summer courses are canceled. Uh, and I would imagine and I would hope that VSU would be really proactive in marketing our online courses now that were actually by force converted to this format. <laughs> so I think that you'll have some choices, but I think that was Kyla who asked that. You just want to, um, you know, you just, you just want to have a backup plan. I would if I were you. Any other questions? So do we get credit for coming here today? You do, because I get to see everybody that registered. So that's why I no longer need anybody to see this. Yep, I can see everybody that was here. So that's great. You still get credit for being here. Okay. Next question. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I sent you an email regarding a part for my, for the project. Will you be able to... Email me back. Yeah, did you just send it? Because I, I stayed up really late last night to, to respond. Oh, I just sent it. Yeah. <laughs> so I know there are no outstanding emails from me, right, that are at least from last so, night. So. so so do we still, do I still go on the first? April? Yeah, no, yeah you're going to want to look at the weekly schedule of assignments that you can still see here on my screen. And everything is still there. So on the first of April, the CSR, uh, Corporate Performance, Business Ethics, uh, theory topic is scheduled to present. Is that what you have? I believe so. Yeah. Yep. So you're still scheduled. So the, oh, the cool thing is that you don't, you know, <laughs> you want to have on your business, <laughs> you can feel free, you know, and then I'll make sure that we, sh do we display your video. <laughs> um, but you don't, you know, you don't have to stand in front of other people. But this seems to be an effective way for us to have our courses. It seems to be working out fine. So we'll, we'll just do this uh, when you have to present. It's just the first day. And this is the first day, and it worked out perfectly. Isn't that a blessing? It will be all right. It's going to be all right. Okay, and so we will be meeting again on Wednesday, same time? Yes, we will be meeting again on Wednesday, same time. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some research, Angela, mm -hmm. uh, on whether or not I'm able to create, like, subgroups on Zoom. Okay. Will allow you guys to meet up, right? So you don't right. have, to have me in there, but I don't know that I'm able to do that without me being present. Does that make sense? In I mean, even if you are present, that's not bad. But everybody <laughs> should be on, on point by tonight of what okay. they. Well, I guess I don't know if I'm able to do the groups uh, simultaneously. Does that make sense? Okay. And me be present in each. I'll, I'll spend some time on Zoom tonight and figure out how to make those. I don't know if I can, and if I can, I'll make them. There, there's another okay. tool called Collaborate that's on Blackboard um, mm -hmm. that I might be able to use too. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try the, my best to figure it out with Zoom since everybody okay. seems to know how to use that. Okay. Any other questions, guys? No. Are we good to go? I think so. All right, guys. You guys be safe and blessed and be positive. It's gonna be all right. All right, you too. Well, I oh, got it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. See you guys later. All right. So, are my IT team members still here? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to go back and share video now for you guys. So, what questions do you? Yeah, I'm here. So what questions do you guys have for me? So basically we can't we can't we can't finish what we have to do until um I think what? it's marketing. No, we don't know what to do. Like we we know stuff has to be assigned, but it's like I sent a, I forwarded out the email, but like I, I guess people are still kind of, some people are still kind of confused. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that uh, email that mm -hmm. I sent to you guys.
Gosh, there's so much has happened in just the last couple of weeks. Goodness. All right. So there are two things that you guys can do. I came up with a suggested outline for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, you can either use the suggested outline that I came up with for you guys. And let me clarify. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Or, yes. Okay. Or what you guys can do, and let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't know if I need to make it that big. You can either use this outline that I came up with you guys or came up with for you guys, or you can come up with your own. In the past, the students have kind of come up with their own <coughs> outline and they really just thought about what the role is of information technology and the success of the company, or in this case of the event. And so then they came up with, you know, like a summary of that, like the overall role that it should play. And then the key areas where they have made specific recommendations on how IT could make the company successful. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I did is it's kind of based on what the other students have done in the past is I've given you guys this very minor outline. I also thought about uh, the way that IT could make this event successful whenever we have it. And then I, I, uh, I came up with a section B, which is a recommended uses of IT for this event. All you guys have to do is to follow this outline and then you guys can um, come up with a section that we'll put at the end of the existing uh, plan. So all you guys would need to do is on the final document that's on Google Drive is that you would finish your respective sections that are based on, you have to have an outline of some sort, that are based mm -hmm. on this outline or whatever one that you guys jointly come up with. And then you're going to copy and paste that into this final document. So you're just going to go literally to the end, and then you'll just paste that there. And then the final project or the final document will be synthesized by the group leader. She'll fix whatever needs to be fixed. Now, another thing that you guys could do to figure out what you want to do, because I don't like to dictate your structure. The cool thing about IT is in the past is that they've had a lot of flexibility in what they could do. So if you click on this link here to strategic plan resources, you can see all of the samples that I've put up here for you for previous COBU 400 classes, almost all of which have had an IT section. And so I remember, let me see if Bensley Gar, I don't think this, the Center for Entrepreneurship Plan in 2015 had a really good one, but I believe that Bensley Gardens had a section. Let me check. No, they didn't. But I just want you to guys, look how organized and professional this is. I did not do this for them. They did it on their own. What I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to upload another section. And I'm going to find one of the more recently submitted uh, IT sections. And then that give you guys some ideas. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Um, so the outline that we're supposed to submit, um, where are we waiting for marketing or how do we know? Now, all you'd have to do here is that there are only a few of you guys. You just allocate each of you guys to these various sections. And, and then what you can do is you can talk about the role that Facebook can, can play and the success of an event like the one that we're having, the role that Instagram can play, the role of Page Moto, the role of a university email server, probably the role of a, of a specialized website. Um, but these are just ideas that I was giving you guys. And then even though there may be some overlap with marketing, you don't have time at this point to coordinate with marketing 
uh, by Friday in case there is some overlap. What will happen now is that your team leader overall and the team leader for marketing will see what's been created, right? And then they'll see where there may be some uh, overlap. And they'll probably merge the sections uh, or they'll leave whatever uh, information that you have intact if it's uh, completely unique. I still think though that the A and B sections that uh, are listed here uh, can be something that you guys do. So in section A, you just are gonna talk about the role of information technology and, and successful event planning. Um, and look, you can literally do a Google search for that. I'm so serious. There are so many things. Uh, that you guys could do. So your IT team needs a roadmap. So you can type in out information technology. Look, here are some ways that technology can make event planning more efficient. You're going to get some information if you guys just do some uh, research. Um, so I, I, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is to be a little bit more proactive, right? Because I came up with this outline for you guys. Uh, and I think that you guys are good students. Actually, most of you guys are good students in terms of GPA. You know, you're good students. And so I think that you guys can, can uh, come up with a better outline if you don't think that this one is as useful. Or you're just going to have to simply uh, just allocate you guys to these two sections and then do some research in order for you to figure it out. So the first section is just the role of information technology and event planning. So that's a, a broader picture. Okay, what does information typically do to facilitate successful events? And the second one is recommended uses of IT for our specific event. So you know that we've got a conference for entrepreneurs. And then what is it that we can use in order for us to make uh, our event more successful? What information technology resources, tools, strategies, et cetera? So that's what you guys are going to put here. That's it. And then you don't have to have these, these subsections if you don't think that these subsections uh, are what makes the most sense. But these are subsections that I thought of um, as ones that I, I figured we could use well. So Google Drive is certainly an information technology tool that we're using for coordination of our event planning activities and our strategic planning for the event. Facebook is one that we're going to need to use for uh, marketing the event. Uh, pre-marketing the event, uh, and post-marketing. Instagram is something we could use. A page moto is simply a social media marketing software program. We're gonna, we can use a university email server to communicate. And then um, I left this other recommended IT tools for the event uh, open for you guys so that you could take the initiative and come up with some other recommendations. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I really, I really don't see why you don't understand what to do. And I'm being frank. No, I think, I think you guys can do it and then you're all smart. And so I, you know, so I just think you guys can do this. I think you can do a better job than this, this that I came up with. But what I am going to do is I know that the students in the fall 2019 COBU 400 course came up with some decent recommendations. So I'm gonna go and get their uh, assignment. And I'll upload that for you. And the ones that were in the spring of 2019 came up with some decent things too. And so uh, I'll, I'll, pro I'll provide both of those for you. I'm actually trying to open it while I'm here with you guys. Hmm. There it is. So they got an 87 on it. Mm. 
<clears throat> All right, so this is the, the plan that they came up with. Right. So there are two things that they did here. Now, this is just their uh, PowerPoint. So <laughs> their PowerPoint was one they were able to present in person. So obviously their PowerPoint is real high level, doesn't give a lot of detail. I think if we get like a, a good IT outline of seeing other like another project, I think it'll help us, you know, clear our minds because I think that's what it is, honestly. You don't want to, do, okay, that's fine. I'm going to see if I can find this actual document that was submitted. <clears throat> and I think if, if you guys can just give me a minute, somebody submitted the actual document. Uh, he didn't have the right one there. Uh, one. Betty said, can you let her in? I'm in now. She yeah, I let her in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There we are. This is the final document. Is that accounting? That, that well, it's not just accounting. It it just so happened to be on that page when we look at it. It's uh -huh. the whole document. All right, so let's look at their outline. So it looks as if in this one, they only focus on website design or they primarily focus on website design. So let's go. Is this the one Daniel Claiborne was a part of? Yes. Okay, I remember him telling me about theirs last semester. Was he complaining? <laughs> no, he, he said it was pretty easy. He said they basically just had to do like a website or something. Yeah, because what I had them do was a deliverable. Because every organization is going to be different. So in addition to just, uh, they, they decided to focus on website design exclusively. And um, so could we, could we do a website and I'm like using like the website like Wix? No, because it doesn't make as much sense for this one. <clears throat> like the reason I did the other one, I want to show you guys some of the other ones. This one is, is um, you guys don't even have to create a deliverable. You just need to talk about how these tools should be used to, to promote the event and make them successful. I think that that's better than what they did. I mean, there's, um, uh, didn't have a lot of depth uh, to what they created, uh, but they did focus on you know, what the cost would be and how we would use that specific tool. Uh, but that's pretty much all that they did. Uh, there are some other examples that I can provide for you where the students did a bit more than that. And they did something that's more along the lines of what I'm recommending that you guys do. Because we don't need a website for the event. All we gotta do is pop, the VSC Center for Entrepreneurship already has a great website. So we don't need a website. Um, right. We have a website and I can create a tab right here or just on their speakers event news, I can just put that event and advertise it there. I can also do a little banner on our webpage. And these are the sort of things that you guys can make a recommendation about. Is that, okay, there's another tool that we could utilize and that's our website. Okay. Well, let's see. There is um, one. Are all we doing like, um, basically saying how to market the the program the event you're talking about how we can use information technology which ranges from marketing tools to uh internal communication tools to registration tools uh whatever in order for us to make the event successful now you don't need to identify every one but I would suggest is that 
you think about this first section here, which is what role IT can play in successful event planning and do a little bit of research on the ways that other people who have done this research before you um, have said that uh, IT can make an event successful. And, and then you can make recommendations. And I, I just made, I just listed stuff that I know we're already gonna use. But Eventbrite could be up here. That's not a marketing tool. I guess some people might consider it that, but it's mostly a registration uh, tool. Um, <laughs> you could talk about, um, like Google Drive is not a marketing tool at all. And it's being used to plan for the event. And so- Eventbrite is a good one because we can talk about it in more in depth with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not limiting you guys. You guys can do whatever. I think just giving you guys this A, B outline here, where A is where you do some research, benchmarking, benchmarking research on what other companies have found to be uh, in, an important role for IT for successful event planning, and then B, where you got some specific recommended uses of IT for this event, and we talk about what we should do with whatever three or four or five, however many you guys designate, you know, should at least probably be three information technology tools that can facilitate this event success. And so you don't have to use the ones that I have up there. You can use whatever ones you want. Uh, so what I'm basically telling you to do is for each subsection is you want to describe how the recommended IT tool will be used for the event. And that's it for each one. Okay. So basically okay for example if we were to go off of your outline would like we give like one role to like that two to four paragraph summary and then another role to like each bulleted thing you have listed on b absolutely and these are the things that i want you guys to do as as future managers absolutely what you just did is you figure out how to allocate the responsibilities and roles in order for you to get the job done and what i even did is i put google drive up here um, and I wrote the pretend, I wrote the narrative for you guys. Do you understand? So you could see an example of how the beginning of something like that would start. So Google Drive is being used as an event planning tool for organization of the consulting group. Blah 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 blah. In addition, it could be used for this, that, and the other. Like Facebook, Facebook uh, could be used to, I don't know, create a specific event page where there are registration links to Eventbrite. Uh, blah, 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 for the event. There should be 10 emails prior, to, I mean, 10 Facebook posts prior to the event uh, that focus on tips for small business owners from the SBA and the Center for Entrepreneurship. And then five follow-up emails that, uh, I mean, five follow-up Facebook posts. Blah, blah. I mean, I'm making stuff up, but I'm saying mm -hmm. you guys can do the same thing that I'm doing and utilize your own creativity um, innovation to come up with how we should use them and, and you don't have to use the ones that I have listed here you know or even the ones I've mentioned you could come up with other best uses for information technology okay it, look there's one up here talking about how you can measure event success post the event using tech I don't know yeah I want you guys to come up with that research and the reason I don't want you to just use the things I've recommended is because I'm not getting much innovation from you guys, right? You know, do some research really that you'll, you'll kind of derive that from the A part of this. And then uh, from, the, from the B section, you can go into details on the specific tools that you're recommending that we use. So what I'll do is I'll go and I'll look for something other than Trojan's Vote where we got um, some really good recommendations on how to utilize <laughs> information technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. What did you type in on Google? How information technology can help with success? Yeah, I, I, I literally uh, typed in this basically. The role of information technology in successful event planning. How information technology can help with successful event planning. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But I do think there are, there, there are a couple of others. I'll put that Trojans vote one up there, but there's some better ones too. And also for the um, individual submission, when you say you're part of what you're doing in the project, do I just put I'm a group member? That's all you can do right now unless before we get off the phone, you guys uh, decide, and I think this is good, everybody's talking right now, 
unless you guys decide on what your outline is going to be and you allocate roles right now, you either have to do that or you've got to have somebody that can uh, decide to take on that responsibility after you guys finish meeting. I don't have to stick on if you guys don't want me to. I can leave the event open or the meeting open and you guys can continue to talk and I won't be present. Uh, but you could um, you could do that. Uh, you can do it now while I'm on the phone. You can do it after I leave. Or somebody's going to have to go to the Google Drive folder and uh, identify everybody that's in the um, IT team. And then once they identify everybody that's on the IT team, then uh, they're going to have to uh, put their role there. And I just think that that's a waste of time. I think you guys should just do it really quickly now and be uh, done with it. You should just mute your microphone, even though I know I've got the same kind of background noise upstairs in my house. <laughs> right now. Can we just do it now? So like we will know. So I guess I think it's a great time to do it. I do too. All right. So so go ahead and take 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 control over uh, what you'd like to see happen. Is Nikki? Mickey, Shanika, are y'all still here? I'm here. Um, yeah. Where is Walter and I told Walter to come back. I see Uriah left. I got class at three thirty now. So we have to this is time in your group, so I gotta go to a class at three thirty and I'm already late for. Yeah, you wanna go ahead and join it. So then uh are what so why don't you want to, for everybody that's here, then you go ahead and assign them to a group. And then everybody okay. that has left, then you, you know, you go back to that spreadsheet and then you I'll put the names in there and then you shoot them a quick email that says, here's your role. Yeah, because this is Selena talking. I know Walter and Uriah, we're in the same class at 3.30, so they're probably in there right now. So well, you should go ahead and go. Yeah, okay. Wait, go to that, that. Why? Is she talking about Dr. Soma's class? Yeah. Oh. So he does have a BB collab. I mean, he got he got something, but I didn't click on it yet. I don't know what it is. Collaborate. But can we do the roles now and then uh, go to his class? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I for who Selena, if you leave, I'll just you're in the group chat, so I'll text it to you. Okay. So what are the particular roles, um, Shanika? <laughs> you want you want to help me out with this? Yes. So what you okay. could do is you could just literally go to that email I sent and you can just copy it and paste it to group chat, get rid of all of this um, narrative and just put people's names beside it. Okay, what? Oh, you sent Shanika a uh, email? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Since put yeah. it that right now so I can see it. Hold on, I'm sending it to you. Okay. And me. Okay. If you want, I can just put it. You want me to put in a group chat? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the formatting won't maintain, but you'll at least be able to. Um, can you, could you like pull it up on your screen? Did you have it on your screen? Did you show us how? I it? did. In fact, yeah, the narrative gets really mushy in that. So yeah, here it is here. Can you see my screen still? No. It says me and topic, host name. It doesn't show anything else. Okay. Oh, I thought you guys could see that the whole time. I apologize. No, we've seen it, uh, but I think it went away, I guess. Oh, there it go. Okay. So, um, so is it like someone does A and someone does Facebook and someone does Instagram? I think yes essentially but I think somebody should do A and somebody should do B because both A and B need um, like introductory sections and summaries right and then yeah. um, there you know each one of the recommended uses of IT for the event that you guys are going to choose uh, needs somebody designated to it okay I could do this is Monty talking I could do B Okay. And I will basically um, 
talk about how is um the tool is being used so for a prime example like facebook so would i talk about facebook or would i bring up a new topic like invent even bright that's what you said right whatever whatever you guys want so what you're going to do for your section if you're going to be the one to write the summary for b mm-hmm. you're going to say we have recommended the following blah blah the following information technology tools for this event you've okay. chosen them because we believe blah 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 whatever you want i'm just making this up Okay. Um, the, the, the ones that we have identified are Facebook for its whatever use, Instagram for its whatever use, Page Motive for its whatever use, Event for its whatever. Do you understand? Yes. University email server for its whatever use and whatever else you recommend for whatever its use is. So actually, you know, following this, um, following this summary is, is a detailed uh, paragraph on how this tool can be utilized to promote the event. And that's all you have to do. Do you understand? Yes. But you kind of got to know what. Whoever's gonna, you know, so whoever's you gonna can't write your, right. You can you can start yours, but you can't really finish it until you figure out what these five or six or three or four, however many you guys want to choose, IT tools are gonna be. Okay. But you also kind of need to know what the main use is for them. I mean, some of it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So you're just gonna have like a high level sentence that summarizes it. Oh well, I'll do the summary. And I know one one of the first ones is Eventbrite, okay. since we're something different. And we could probably use Instagram since the majority of people are using Instagram right now. And Facebook because alumni is oh, Facebook. On. Yeah, Facebook is because alumni is up there. Um, another tool we probably could use Indeed. Can't you do like um events and stuff on Indeed? You can, but because it's mostly a job promoting mm-hmm. tool, I don't know about Indeed as much. But again, I, that's why you guys can kick me out of the meeting if you want. Because <laughs> um, I want you guys to have some. I mean, I know I'm the the company. No, uh, you're. I, I guess consultant for this for this one, but I I um I wouldn't use Indeed. I would use um Eventbrite, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, and uh, I see Twitter is not up there, so we could we could use Twitter too. Yeah. Twitter is a great one because a lot of people get on Twitter. Okay. So it looks like she's changed what I have here, which is fine. Sounds great. So she's got Eventbrite, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Is that what you recommended? Yes, ma'am. But I just need, I think we should do one more just at least to have five and we should be fine. I think you should maybe just use the university email server. Okay. Do you understand? Because, yeah, you know, I- most of the people we want to get to come here are, are, uh, and I would talk about, and so now that I have the five, I would do the um, B summary. This summary talks about how we're going to use each one in each way. And then I would, each, somebody would talk about Eventbrite, somebody would talk about Instagram, somebody would talk about Facebook like that. Exactly. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. And I'll do a, I'll do the summary for A. So all we have to do now is assign people for Eventbrite. Yeah, and Facebook and all that stuff. Right, and then, you know, Bethlehem for A, what you're going to do is yours is, is different than B and that you're just going to go do that research like I did online and on the library or wherever. Find oh. you a few sources on how information technology can help with successful event planning. I'd be willing to bet that the recommendations that you find, you know, in reputable places, right? Uh, and I have actually none of these are real reputable places yet. I've never heard of any of these websites. Maybe Eventula or Eventias is something that's reputable. Um, and do you do you want to cite it? Like, do you want me to cite where I get it from? Yeah. What you should do right now is uh at least gather the email addresses from where you get the articles, right? And then I'll, I'm going to show the whole class a, a real easy citation tool that you guys can use so that all you have to do is type in the website and it'll generate the whole citation for you guys in the whole reference sheet. Uh, yeah, but so right now, uh, because I don't, I don't anticipate you guys having a really well put together reference list by Sunday, just grab the websites from wherever anybody gets any information and then include that as part of your as part of your section. Okay. 
I think um we're we're definitely on a better path because I think we were just um confused of what was going on. Like we knew what we were doing, but we I, I think we were just confused about like each person's role in a sense. Yeah, that's fine. And I think that you guys needed to feel like I was fine with you guys taking the initiative that you guys are taking now. So Shanika. Sam. So I, I need to establish who the group leaders are here in order for me to give uh credit. So I, mean, I know that you've initiated this this conversation with me about a structure and an outline, and it sounds to me like you're functioning in the leadership role. Is mm -hmm. that accurate? See, I'm scared to take on that role just in case stuff go bad. But it doesn't make any difference. If stuff goes bad, that gives you a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, initially. Uh, I know it doesn't matter what initially happened, but in real life, if you're doing the work, shouldn't you get credit for it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Mickey is the leader. She just got, she got stuff going on at the moment. Right, but you got, but she can have a co-leader, and if you're actually doing this work, and I know the email that I've got was on the 11th, and I, you're the one that asked me the question about this, and got the clarity for the group, and based on your initiation of that, is how everybody got clarity on what needs to happen. Right. So I think you should just go ahead and take it on, because you have a parachute. Okay. You know, worst case is you're going to get credit for what you did. That's actually the worst case, but it's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it is we know, and we can talk to you through, via email, because I know a lot of professors is hard to get in contact. So I think this is a good thing. Yeah. I like teaching online. I just have, it's actually probably better for me now. Now I'm still, instead of the College of Business running me around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I know I have a late submission for the individual. So now I can put up there that my role is to do the summary for part B. I mm -hmm. can um, I have a question. How mm -hmm. long is the uh, summary, like minimum and maximum, supposed to be? Is it supposed to be a page or? No, I'm not going to give you that specification. It's supposed to be what you feel like you've done a good job. It can be abbreviated if necessary. I, I can't because I don't. I don't know. I mean. You might find, at first I thought there were no resources on the role of information technology and event planning. I just, I just found, what, what, several thousand? Yeah. Oh, 946 million. <laughs> right? So you apparently can, can do some decent research. So I don't want to limit you. I just do a good job. Okay. Mm. Okay. Wait, who is Marcus Williams? Is that the other guy? I'm not sure. Is it is he somebody that's in our group chat? There is another guy in our group, but I do not know his name. Let me go look at the Google Doc. He's in the group chat. I just didn't I haven't saved his name yet. Is he in this group chat? Right now? Uh Marcus Williams. Project. Marcus, you want to communicate with us via chat and let us know what's going on? Are you part of this group? Marcus? I guess not. <laughs> I know there is the one person in our group like that we aren't, we don't know. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. I don't know his name. I'm lo I'm looking at the uh, roster now. He's in our uh texting group chat. I just don't have his contact saved in my phone. I I'm sorry, y'all. Is this still the IT um group? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I had I I stepped away because I I had got some a, a porn call. I'm sorry. So what they they've done is they've already come up with how they're going to allocate responsibilities. So Shanika is actually going to officially be your co-leader uh, because she initiated the conversation. Uh, via Shanika, email. just just go ahead. Let's let's switch that out. You just be the leader because I I'm not I'm at this point I don't know if I'm going. I'm not even lie to you. I'm not. I don't know if I'm be able to be the leader. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. So then you guys. So then you just change all of that on the spreadsheets, and then you just allocate roles to everybody, and uh, just just let me know. Well, uh, uh, Ricky, you still on the phone? I mean, on the phone, on the Zoom? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we was we was doing like uh who do, who does what, and I know I'm doing a summary of like for the event, and we was saying that we're basically gonna use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the university email server, and the invite bright. But for those five parts, like we just have to give them out to each person in the group to talk about it more in depth. Okay, let me do the event right then. Okay. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out this uh, email as a PDF file, and I'm going to upload it to the IT Google Drive folder. How's that sound? Thank you. So we can have it. Sounds good to me. And I'll put it in the chat for um, each person that they want to do. But I'll tell them that Mickey already called for um, invite break, event break. Actually, let me go ahead and just make this adjustment. I'm going to reply all and make these changes. What are the sections that you guys are saying that you're gonna do now? Um, event bright. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, the computer's going so slowly. You're going to do event, right? Facebook. You said Instagram still? Yes, it's still invite, right? Facebook, Instagram, the university email, and Twitter. Okay. I have a question while you're typing that. Mm -hmm. Are we still doing this case analysis? Yeah, don't think of it that hard. It's not that bad, promise. Okay. <laughs> you, you don't have to do that until you can do it later if you want. Uh, but, you know, the week that week, the week right after we cover information on corporate social responsibility is when you answer those questions. It's yeah, okay. a lot of case. So it's not like a typical case analysis where you have to figure out your own recommended strategy for a scenario. I give you questions, you answer the questions in a narrative format. It's almost like um, a, a, long, a longer end of chapter uh, sort of assignment. Okay. So it, it, it's fine. It's, it's not hard and it's, it's relatively interesting. It's also not that complex. It's not based on our typical strategy concept. It's based on, you know, firms doing good, a large part of the section at the end is you giving me your treatise on how you intend to be a socially responsible business leader when you get to the job. <laughs> but you also got to demonstrate your, your understanding of the concept that we go over, uh, you know, the definition of responsibility, uh, all those sorts of things. So, okay. I just sent you the revised uh, outline. I'm going to print it now and upload it. Oh, I have a question too. Why are you up here? Mm hmm. So what was the what was the midterm grade based off of? Uh, give me one second. It was based on. I think I ended up stopping with you guys at about uh, week five, because after that people stopped submitting things. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, I had a bad I had a bad grade for my midterm, but I I think it was because I didn't do the individual submission because that was a part of week five. Yeah. You mean like your uh, strategic plan update? Yeah. Yeah. And that's worth 20% of your grade. So by default, your grade will be 20 points lower. Uh, but remember, that's a fake grade. It okay. doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you just need to go in and do it. Okay. And then the 20 points come back, you know, minus whatever few late, 
it's only a few weeks now for your late penalty. So go ahead and get it in immediately. Yeah, I think I had you had told me I could do it because um my CIAA situation. Oh, see, so you just need to do it. So then yeah. it'll you'll get the whole twenty points back. Do you yeah. understand? Yes. Yeah, because I remember you called me, couldn't it, uh, access it? You can tell I can't. I'm not multitasking well. So. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I just had to ask. I'll run for. Okay, so that is there for you guys. So you guys have done it. So you've got everything that you need for the assignment now, right? Yes. All right, so what I am going to still do is I'm going to go and look and try to find some better examples for you. <laughs> because we do have some decent examples. Because, and I need to upload the samples, you know, update the sample uh, classes that I have there. I think it's spring of 2019 and in the fall of 2018, I got some good submissions. So I'll put that for you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Um, no, I think that's all. All Can right, you, and you made the modifications to the course roster now. Yes, right? ma'am. Yeah. All right. Adding in the roles once we finish the rest of the uh, other teammates. Okay, all right. Okay, and you know now that all you guys need to do is copy and paste whatever work you've done on your section to this, this final document for yeah. Friday. You just copy and paste what we put. Yeah, okay. Thank right, you. Sir. You're welcome. All right, you guys have a great rest of your week. You too. All right, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.